And, you know, it just shows that Kamala Harris failed to perform, but it's no surprise she was a failure to perform because she's never been a great performer in anything she's done politically in the past. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. If you are meeting me for the first time, my name is Clevy, and it is so nice to meet you. Oh, my God, you guys. I feel like the question everyone has at the top of the list is, what went wrong you know at some point it was looking like it was going great for her i'm talking about kamala harris now and so a lot of people are like what went wrong what happened what didn't happen however i have some some little sense to throw in here and there but before we dive into that let's head straight into this video hey james great to see you what were the final issues here that was so decisive in some of these battleground states that really came in hard for Donald Trump? Well, I could just tell you, Sherry, about my experience here in North Carolina the last few days. Everything people talked about, you know, it was very uniform. All the Trump supporters said the same thing. Economy, immigration, these were the big things. They felt like the country was out of control. And I'll tell you what, mm -hmm. we were in California earlier in the week, and there where we met Trump supporters, they had very similar concerns, you know. And it's really interesting to me because once upon a time, the Democrats got this. You know, Bill mm -hmm. Clinton knew this. James Carville knew this. It was the economy mm -hmm. stupid. They knew this. And then somehow <clears throat> over the decades, they kind of abandoned that. And they got further and further caught up in their own sort of obsessions about things. And they became so unable to pivot back to where they used to be, they vacated the field for Donald Trump, who on so many issues actually would have been almost like a centrist Democrat 30 years ago. Mm. James, the polls were predicting this was going to be a very close result tonight and it looked like it was going that way for a while. Um, but it looks like it could be quite decisive for Donald Trump. At the moment, Fox News has 277 Electoral College votes. He only needed the 270. But it could get higher than that. There's still four states mm -hmm. where the votes are being counted as we speak. So in the end, this might actually not be the knife-edge, deadlocked result that everyone was predicting. Well, I mean, in fact, the fact, Sherry, that we are talking about this result tonight and not saying, oh, gosh, exactly. I don't know, well, we're going to start the counting again tomorrow in Pennsylvania and Michigan. You know, the fact that we're not even talking about that and that where you saw all the numbers come in, Harris consistently underperformed everywhere across the map so that even when you know they still had huge amounts of absentee ballots to count in big cities like detroit and pennsylvania or philadelphia and places like that you know they just mathematically weren't going to be enough in there to get harris over the line so that's what we're able to talk about this tonight the other interesting thing sherry too is the popular vote and if Donald Trump can eke out a real proper, you know, 50.5 percent even win in the popular vote, this will shut down so many critics who say, oh, well, he's illegitimate. The Electoral College is this threat to democracy. You know, we heard this mm -hmm. so many times here from the left that, you know, it was the Electoral College that was a real problem. Um, and, you know, it just shows that Kamala Harris failed to perform, but it's no surprise she was a failure to perform because she's never been a great performer in anything she's done politically in the past. Yeah. The Democrats were relying on the youth vote, also the women, but those women. votes either didn't come women. out strong enough for her or, you know, I mean, particularly when you look at the youth vote, Yep, sure, it looks like the Democrats won college-educated women, but not necessarily young men. You guys, let me just chip in something here. And I feel like during the whole of this campaign, yes, I know that they were all tilting towards women. They were trying to hammer on the fact of gender, gender, gender. But then again, we were not hearing any real policies out there. Instead, every single time that you know any conversations are raised, you always see it being around surrounding um, the abortion rights or toxic masculinity that is what you get every single time and so it made sense that the male had to like step back you know just what is going on here like let's re do you understand that's that's me anyways but that's what i felt but anyways let's continue men absolutely um ran a mile from the harris campaign and you know i think the democrats have to only themselves to blame for this, you know, and this happens every every cycle, but it's been happening more and more recently. You know, the left has become, uh, you know, a very feminized party, you can say, you know, 
all, with all, a lot of their policies are concerned about abortion rights, reproductive rights, all of that sort of thing. But also, you know, the talk about things like toxic masculinity, um, you know, and the sort of attacks on just sort of the male gender as kind of this sort of problematic sort of idea. And so guys pick this up. They're not stupid and they feel like they're not welcome. And so, you know, they look, what does Donald Trump have to offer? Well, you know, he's got Joe Rogan, Dana White, and, you know, he's making them feel welcome. Mm-hmm. So it's like, a no-brainer for young men, but also, you know, women also, I think, felt fairly patronized by this this whole campaign of Harris because it sort of talked to them, talked down to them like, oh, you know, you need our protection and so on. And I think it was quite patronizing to some of them who said, you know, actually, there are more important issues. Uh, I'm not just concerned about, you know, your particular radical interpretation of, you know, there should be abortion for all 40 weeks of pregnancy, you know, which a lot of women find quite horrific, but also, you know, that like women like everybody else have to live in the real world with grocery Mm -hmm. prices and gas prices and food prices Mm -hmm. and everything else. And they said, you know what, this is not working for us. We need to go back to where things were before. I think, as I just said a moment ago, the Democrats tried to make this all about personality, all about Donald Trump as a man. That's what they fought against. Whereas Trump was fighting on policy issues, and the most critical of which that we saw from the exit polling was the economy. And, you know, just like in Australia, the Mm -hmm. United States is going through a cost of living crisis. There is a sense that the economy, that people were better off under Donald Trump when he was last president. They're not happy uh, with how things are going at the moment. You know, surely not all of that uh, is necessarily the fault of Biden, but, but Donald Trump did lay out a strong economic policy plan. And this was one of the main issues, the biggest issue that voters supported Trump over. I, you know, that's the thing. He articulated plans. He talked about things he wanted to do. He talked about things that were unpopular, like tariffs yes, with economists and, yes, you know, sir. the sort of people who make opinion and things like this. But people understood what he was talking he about. Talks. And something a voter uh, mm-hmm. told me in California really struck me. He said, you know, one candidate doesn't tell you anything. The other one tells you what they're going to do or what they want to do. You might not like it, but at least you Whether know you where like they stand. Or not. And I think, again, Kamala Harris just left the field vacant. She came out with Beyonce and Cardi B and a bunch of, you know, second-rate celebrities. Oh. And, you know, big deal. Cardi but that doesn't girl. affect anybody's, you know, price of groceries. And it was from the start with Harris. It was a vibe election. It, was, it started out with joy. And then, oh, J.D. Vance is weird. Exactly. And all of these different sort of emotional triggers and pulls. But nothing that actually was practical. Yeah, indeed. And and how embarrassing was that moment, by the way, when Cardi B got up there, she didn't have her speech and everyone had to wait for a full minute or more until her she got her speech because she, she just couldn't read. She couldn't yeah. speak without having a teleprompter. So, you know, not even the celebrities work for Kamala Harris. Uh, James Murray, you're doing a terrific job and you've pulled an all-nighter. So thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much Sky News for that. Now you guys, let's really dive and talk more about this thing. For, at what moment did it all go wrong? You guys remember when that switch happened? If we are taking our mind back to when the switch happened, you know, when Biden, you know, gave it to, handed over to Kamala Harris. And I said something that night. I said, they are going to play this on a lot of sentiments. They are going to play this on, you know, the fact that she's a woman, they're going to appeal to, you know, that side. And we know that this is the a- day and age of feminities everywhere, right? So they're going to really play that, you know, using that as one of their strengths. They're going to also pull out the race car, which was quickly shut down. But for a while, they were really going strong on that card that, you know, using the race, she's a black woman this, that, and this, that. So those were the only things that we were getting. And every single time these interviews were done and you're telling somebody, okay, how, why are you proud of her? The only thing we kept on hearing was, oh, she's a woman. Oh, she's black. She's this, she's that. You know, we are not hearing policies. But every single time you sit down, you hear Trump speak, you hear Van speak, you hear Vivek speak. You know, every single time you're hearing policies at every single time you may not like them but you were definitely hearing policies unlike the other side i mean towards the end you know we had the huge announcement from taylor you know we had the celebrities come do their thing and you're like oh boy 
what exactly is happening we had oh are we going to talk about that that three three to one presidential debate because it was not one-on-one -on -one. it was three to one it was just somehow are we going to talk about the failed yo you guys listen a lot did happen and it from the beginning from those of course from those who saw that from the beginning you would know that that was off to a very wrong start it was off I don't know what happened after the switch 40 days later or 30 days later you're now coming and accepting interviews but before that time what happened when were you not accepting interview and the very first interview we thought you know would be your very first solo interview you took in your running myth with you all right is it emotional support now i don't know but you took your you took your running mate with you to to the interview it just did not make sense every single turn shh, shh. and you've seen 226 and 280 that is huge that is huge if you ask me so you guys Congratulations are in order for the 47th president of the United States of America, President-elect Donald Trump, and my man, J.D. Vance, the vice president-elect. Well done. This is like a huge win for each and every one of us. Um, let me also know your own thoughts too. At what point did you think that, you know, it really went all bad for them? <laughs> you know... Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Shout out to everyone. It's been an amazing, it's been an amazing four months. I can't wait to see what will happen in the next few years because it's about to be great again. Do have an amazing day and I'll catch you in the next video. God bless you.